Well, to get a sense of how Lebanon is picking up the pieces following this horrific explosion, we're now joined via Skype from Beirut by Iraqi Lebanese academic and commentator Dr. Zainab Safar. Thanks so much indeed for joining us. Uh, welcome to the program. Uh, I would imagine that uh, you're still in a bit of shock uh, given what you experienced uh, this week. Hello, Peter. Thank you for hosting me. Well, actually, yes, it's a state that um, took place yesterday. It was appalling. The immensity of the blow, the blast, the destruction, uh, the humanitarian catastrophe is something which is just beyond words. And I think that this shock is something that we as Lebanese can easily wake up from. So uh, whatever has happened yesterday, uh, perhaps is a situation where we should always call for the unity, the solidarity, the fraternity among the whole people of Lebanon and all those who say that they are friends of Lebanon and all of those who are, if I can say and describe them as adversaries to Lebanon, it's about time to uh, forget your uh, tensions perhaps with the government of Lebanon and try to find a bridge in order to help this uh, country which is now in a state of catastrophe due to what happened. Take us to uh, yesterday. Uh, where were you at the time of the explosion and how did you experience uh, what happened? Well, I just left work yesterday at the time of the explosion and I was heading back home. Uh, my home is actually in Beirut and uh, the immensity of the explosion is something which is inexplicable because you can never imagine something happened like it's a, it was a, a wave, a shock wave in advance and then afterwards this massive blast that you can hear it's as if it's down your building. It was something very big and it's all because of this amount of highly combustible material that was stocked in a warehouse uh, in the heart of the port of uh, Beirut. Um, if I may talk about, you know, the most recent numbers, you said in your report it's like 135 uh, people, martyrs, dead. And this number is increasing steadily as long as, you know, the ongoing processes of trying to uh, check and detect and trying to retain the bodies from under uh, the rubble. The searching and the fact-finding and all of those missions on the ground are working incessantly in order to try and divulge where are those people who are still tens of people whose fate is still unknown. 5,000 people, around 5,000 people are wounded and injured and um, uh, as we said that hundreds of others, tens or perhaps hundreds of others, fate is still unknown. Massive destruction in the heart of uh, Beirut, this vibrant city. Uh, today, yesterday was a black day and today, you know, the blackness is even more when there is an increase in the number of the casualties. Um, not to talk about, uh, you know, uh, as you all know that Lebanon is passing through a very dire economic situation that is uh, hovering over Lebanon for a long time now. As you said also in your report that the medical supplies are not enough and we are in dire need for medical supplies. Many countries, many brotherly countries um, like Kuwait, like Qatar, like Iran, like Iraq, Iraq sent a high profile delegation which is now in Beirut, they arrived in Beirut and they brought along with them around 20 tons of aid, medical aid and 51 doctors to help also in the relief operations. Uh, the grain silos are totally devastated and 300,000 people, 300,000 Beirutis are stranded because they lost their homes. How much do we know about this warehouse? We believe that it's been carrying these chemicals for, for six years or maybe even longer. Um, under whose jurisdiction and authority was this warehouse? Was it something that was known? Because to have something containing those kind of chemicals in a, a heavily built up area is uh, got to be dangerous. Well, allow me to 
me to give you some uh, information from well-informed security uh, officials, so to say. This ship came into Lebanon back in the year 2013. It left the port of Georgia and it was heading to Mozambique. It stopped in the port of Beirut where it was supposed to uh, deliver a kind of bulldozer or something like that. And then due to certain kind of conflict and problems between the operating company and the company that owns this ship, this ship was stopped and not allowed to leave. And there was a kind of uh, jurisdiction against this ship leaving the port of Beirut. So it was stopped over there and retained there back in the year 2013. After three years, they discovered that this ship was in a state that, you know, the, uh, the status of the ship was in a state of erosion. And it was very problematic to leave those materials inside the ship. So consequently, uh, those highly combustible materials were uh, 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 lo uh, downloaded, you know, this cargo was downloaded into this uh, warehouse, warehouse number 12 in the port of Beirut. And uh, I can say that uh, the immensity of this cargo, which is 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate, is equivalent to around 1,400 tons of TNT and um, the authorities who are responsible for this I believe it's the security authorities it's the judicial authorities why would they keep such uh, this big time bomb in Lebanon in a warehouse which is among also residential areas it was a very big negligence it was a very big wrongdoing to decide to leave them there. All right, so what is uh, going to happen over the next uh, days or so? I suppose right now the uh, operation is to try and find people and retrieve people that perhaps are alive and those that sadly that may have passed on. And also I guess an investigation is probably underway already. Of course, you know, the investigation report is going to be issued a statement and the report is going to be issued, I guess, in five days, after four days from now. And uh, the fact-finding investigation has already started. All what we care about is to try and see who is still alive. You know, those loved ones, those people who are mourning today, it's very difficult when you have people whose fate is unknown. If it's a martyr, then it's a martyr, and we all mourn for them. But those people whose fate is unknown, recovering their bodies is a very uh, intense, uh, you know, it, it involves lots of intense feelings. It, it's, a, it's a very chaotic situation, if I may say. Um, you know, everyone is calling everyone, trying to say, did you locate this person? Did you, shall I send you the picture? Even if we get and, you know, pictures are delivered to us, it's very difficult under this immense rebel to try and see where they are. You know, just today, they recovered a person who was aiding and who was helping after the explosion yesterday. Today in the morning, they recovered his body. It was a huge blessing for us to recover this person, but we are still waiting for tens and tens and tens of others who are under the rubble.